Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to The Creative World. My name is Ryan, and in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys a quick and dirty editing breakdown of the following image. So first things first, I'm going to duplicate my background image and turn that off, and let's name this subject. I'm going to start off by selecting my subject out from the background using the pen tool. Now, when it comes to making selections of your subject, it's very easy to become a perfectionist but keep in mind of the medium of which you're going to display these images. A lot of times for Facebook or Instagram, you don't need to be that perfect as people won't be zooming into the pixel level. So if it saves you a headache or saves you some time, go ahead and make things less than perfect. All right, once I have finished making the selection with the pen tool, I'm going over to the paths tab, right click my work path and make selection. Default settings is okay. Go back to my layers tab and create a layer mask. Now you'll see I have separated my subject from the background. Now you might have noticed that I obviously didn't do a very good selection around this parts of my subject, and that is because I know that I'm going to be putting my subject on a pure white background, so this is okay. So let's go ahead and select below my subject layer and create a new layer and fill that with the foreground color, which happens to be white, and you'll see just like that, it matches up pretty darn well. Now there are areas down here, you can see parts of the background where it's not completely white. We're going to fix that very easily. To fix this, I'm going to create a levels adjustment layer above my subject. Hold Alt and click in between to clip that levels adjustment to my subject layer. I'm going to go ahead and adjust these sliders until it becomes completely white. Invert that layer mask so it doesn't affect everything. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint over those white areas on the layer mask with the color white. and that's looking pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and right click the subject layers layer mask and apply layer mask. So now I just have the subject by itself. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and merge the levels adjustment layer with the subject by selecting both those layers and holding control and pressing E. Let's rename that subject. Now with the subject layer selected, I'm going to run a frequency separation action for my skin retouching. On the high pass layer, I'm going to use a spot healing brush. Make sure the sample mode is set to current layer. And I'm just gonna go ahead and fix any kind of blemishes that might be in my photo. Now on the low frequency layer, I'm going to use a lasso tool with the feathering of about, let's say 20 pixels. And this is dependent on my image, of course. And then using that lasso tool, I'm going to select areas of the skin where I want to even out the lighting, do a little bit of Gaussian blur and then repeat this for the rest of the image. Luckily this image was shot in a pretty moody, dramatic lighting fashion, so you can't see a lot of details on the skin anyway, so the skin retouching for this was pretty simple. Now I'm going to select all those frequency separation layers and press Control E to merge those all into one singular layer. So for editing for this image, I'm going to go ahead and select this image that I found on pixabay.com and drag it into my composition. Now for this, I want to use just the petals from these cherry blossoms. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a selection of various different petals of different sizes and shapes and just kind of strategically place them throughout my image. To do this selection, I'm simply going to use the lasso tool and just put a feathering of zero pixels and simply select copy and paste. Again, like I said before, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. These petals are going to be fairly small in the image and no one is going to see any kind of imperfections when it comes to my selection. Now I'm going to delete the original stock image and you'll see here I have many different cherry blossoms. Let's go ahead and select all those, Control G to group them. Let's name those cherry blossom. Now one thing I like to do is when I'm dealing with a bunch of small little elements that I'm picking and dragging along, without having to find out which each individual layer is and move that around, go up to the top where it says auto select, and then now whatever element that I click on, it'll automatically select that layer in the layer panel. So it just helps for moving things around a bit. So let's get all these guys together. Let's select all of them, make them a little bit smaller. Control T, Control J to duplicate those layers. And let's go ahead and control T and flip those around. Maybe rotate a bit. So now we have a bit more variation. So now let's go ahead and just start positioning things around. In order to keep myself from accidentally selecting my subject a lot, I'm gonna go ahead and select that layer and just click the lock button. So that way, when I'm clicking around, it won't accidentally drag it. Thank you. 
and I am pretty happy with the placement of all the petals so I'm going to go ahead and select all of the petal layers and press Control E to merge all of them into one layer. Now we want to create a little bit more dynamic with all this so I'm going to go ahead and select that layer. Let's go ahead and rename this layer and go ahead and press Control J to duplicate that and then I'm going to scale these down a bit more bring them into the background and then I'm going to add another blur to it and then I'm going to start erasing away parts that are covering up my subject because these petals are going to be essentially in the background of the image. Let's go ahead and control J to duplicate that again and drag them over here. Maybe turn them around a bit, free transform a bit more. And to add a bit more motion, I'm going to go ahead and with that layer selected, go up to filter, blur gallery, and path blur. I'm going to go ahead and select the starting point up here, the ending point, whoops, the ending point, drag it over here, and then I can go ahead and use this slider curve to add a complex curve of blur to my image. Let's go ahead and turn center blurred off and just change the speed a bit more. Now, once more, I'm going to duplicate that original merged layer, transform or scale it up quite a bit, and add a larger blur to that. And go ahead and just move some of these around. All right, now I want to change the color of these cherry blossoms to something that fits the image a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and select all of those cherry blossom layers, Control G to make a new group. And with that layer selected, I'm going to go ahead and create a hue and saturation adjustment layer. Hold Alt and click in between to clip that to the group below it. Select Colorize. One step that I forgot to do before I added all the cherry blossoms was dodging and burning. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the cherry blossoms layer, select my subject layer, and run my dodge and burn action, which just creates two curve layer adjustments. Select dodge, press B for the brush tool, make sure I have the hardness down to zero, and a flow set to, I don't know, 30%, it sounds good. And then I'm just going to start dodging and burning my subject. Turn my cherry blossom layer back on. And now I'm going to finish off this image by adding in a few lens flares. And to enhance the bloom a little bit more around certain areas, I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer on top, set the linear dodge. Let's select a light blue color and just start painting in around areas where the light will be peeking through. Next, I'm going to move on to my color toning and sharpening phase. To do so, I'm going to hold Control, Alt, Shift, and press E to merge all new layers into a new layer on top. And as you can see here, I now have that merged. I'm going to go ahead and set the blending mode of that layer to Overlay. Go up to Filter, Other, High Pass Filter. And let's say uh, a radius around 3 should work for this image. I'm going to go ahead and merge all visible layers once again. Right click that layer and convert it to a smart object. And now go up to filter, camera raw, and I'm gonna go ahead and load up a preset that I made that has various settings that I tend to add to most of my images. And to finish things off, I'm going to create a color lookup adjustment layer. And lastly, I'm going to create a color lookup adjustment layer. Set the blending mode of that layer to color so it does not affect the values at all. And then I'm going to load a 3D LUT or a lookup table that helps enhance the colors that I'm trying to go for. And just like that, the image is complete. Guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, maybe give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more content like this in the future, consider subscribing. By the way, guys, if you want a deeper insight into my editing process, which includes getting your hands on a Photoshop document, consider joining my Patreon, link down below. And until next time, stay creative.